I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And today we thought we would take a look at one of the only female characters to survive the show. Well, I mean, she didn't survive, but she made it nearly to the end. So this week we are having a chat about Rowena and our thoughts and feelings on the character, the canon. Um, Usually we try and bring a little bit of fanfic into these character studies, but I don't know about you, Sandra, I don't think I've read anything with Rowena in it. Um, Not... Yeah. anything other than like a, a a side character you know like the plot convenient witch yeah i feel that. like we could probably find i mean i know there's sam weena stuff we'll that, get to that yeah we'll if we if we that. did that but um yeah, you said almost survived till the end she did survive she came back right like she got like they normally do she was i think she got that esteemed title of well she's already like died and come back numerous times but when she did die at the end, we thought she was dead, dead. She came back and she was the queen of hell. So even though we didn't see her again after that one episode, I'm, you know, I'm sure she went on to do grand things in hell. <laughs> she lives on. She lives on. Yeah. But like in terms of an actual mortal body, she yeah. made it almost to the end. Almost to so, the end. So, yeah. I think me and Sandra share similar kind of feelings here that we both hated Rowena when she first arrived. Like she was mm-hmm. funny and I liked I liked the kind of plays that she had with Crowley, but we hated her character. My husband hated her character as well. We were just like, ooh, oh no, no. I didn't, you know what? Like she really graded on me initially where I didn't even necessarily find I didn't really find her funny. In the beginning, um, I appreciated her more on the second, like when I rewatched again and saw her character, I really like knew a little bit more of the backstory. But initially I was just like, what's going on? Why are they doing this? Um, you know, my husband and she's not really Scottish and having to go through all that <laughs> and just all of the, oh, um, Ted. you know, oh, Ted. poor Ted, poor Ted. But um, that whole, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really start finding her humor. The first season, I didn't find her very, even though she was funny, she was just grating on me. And I think it was because looking back at it now, I do love the way she, like, when you say the Winchesters, like the way she would say yeah. them and stuff, like she was so opposed to them and everything that they, she picked up right away on, I think the, hold or the weird dynamic that Crowley had with them that I think she was yeah. immediately like no shutting this down this isn't a thing we need to get rid of them and seeing her I think the first time she really like met up with Dean again I think it was in that bar and she was just dead set on like getting rid of him um yeah and had the other I think it was like the other patrons or whatever like she flipped the flipped them on him on Dean and all that stuff. So yeah, didn't I like which storylines? Like I like that. I like I guess I like those kinds of baddies. I think if I had to pick. Are we um, talking about witches in general or which witches in general? Episodes? Which is I was general. gonna say which, which episodes, episodes on Supernatural no, which is weird because icky. I don't like them on the show, but I've I've always kind of liked, you know the lore of them yeah but for some reason it doesn't hit the same on supernatural and i'm sure that's because of a lot of what you're like given in terms of reaction to them at least in the beginning but then that that switches yeah and that does (laughs) change and i do like that the um but i think a lot of that comes from too i think sam's appreciation of yes rowena Right. And just magic in general that you don't get right away. And then you see how because he is he is so like nerdy and 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 stuff and kind of like, you know, you could tell he's a Harry Potter fan. Like, you know, they make references to that. So you could tell he likes the 
he likes that lore too and and really researches that. So I think yeah. I gain an appreciation of Rowena more through her interactions with the boys as it becomes more of a partnership and not a what can you do for me? Because they 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 do that transaction thing quite a bit. And there's not a lot of respect both ways. It takes a while, I think, to get that. And I don't know if that's a lot of what they've dealt with with Crowley too, because Crowley was always very transactional, right? So mm. um, even then that could be debatable with um, maybe Crowley and Dean. Definitely not Crowley and Sam. I don't think there was any love lost between those two, but Crowley and Dean had that weird thing going on for a little while that nobody could really figure out. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of like layering her in with all of whatever's already going on. So initially, yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't take to her. It really took, it took a while. And then, then I just kind of, I think it was probably by season 12, I think, where I really just started like, whenever she came on, I, I really enjoyed her because she just kept coming back. Right. It wasn't just like every once in a while, I think out of all the females, she's, she's definitely been in the most episodes as a side side. Oh yeah. 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 And I always, I always liked that she was an asshole and she was portrayed that way. And she never deviated from that. Mm -hmm. She never, even when she got like closer with the boys and even you know she she had that she had the bonding with sam and i was like you know 100 percent there was boning going on again <laughs> again between sam and rowena not jared and ruth <laughs> sam and rowena jesus christ <laughs> they, like they were definitely fucking like fight me on this they definitely were okay but she never she never stopped being who she was like Crowley was an asshole but then like he mellowed and he softened and you know he like came around and I think that happens with quite a lot of um characters you know characters that stick around certainly they mellow and they become you know like even Cass look at Cass was the um, uh, soldier of heaven blah 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 and then by the end he's just a cuddly friendly neighborhood angel mm -hmm. you know yeah. but Rowena was always like nah I'm up for me and I'm ruthless, and she doesn't change, like, mm -hmm. at all. You know, from, like, the sort of early things where she's trying to, like, manipulate Crowley with the car and stuff in hell, mm -hmm. and then right to the end, even with the final scene, she's like, I would not die for you or your brother, Sam. Like, but this is not about you. This mm -hmm. is, like, not even a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, she never, she never sacrifices herself. She will yeah. always put herself first and she never falls into that hero trap that a lot of other characters on the show seem to, where they're like, oh, for the greater good and I have sacrificed myself for my brother or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's usually my brother, but, you know, she never <laughs> falls into that. She's like, no, I'm looking out for number one. If your mm -hmm. interests align with mine, we'll work together. But the minute they don't, I'm not sticking around out of any sense of loyalty. And I, I really like that in a character. I like a bit yeah. of conviction. Yeah. You know, like even even Lucifer, like he was never I know they tried to be like, oh, he's so evil. He wasn't, he was just cute. Like Nick was cute. It was sweet. <laughs> you're like, oh baby, you're Lucifer, really? No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Sit up. You know? But even like, even towards the end, like when he was like he resurrected Sam and stuff because he wanted to get in with the mm -hmm. boys and he was willing to, you know, sacrifice for that. Rowena never did. Mm -hmm. you know to get her to do things they had to back her into a corner chain her to tables in some cases you know with the whole mark of cain book of the damn thing yeah and i always really like that and i i'm a huge huge fan of her being genuinely one of the most powerful people in the show yeah like she was you know she like maybe she's not an angel power but she was powerful as shit and she's a teeny yeah. teeny tiny little person yeah and I love that. I love that because it's a show of really big guys. And it's a guy's show. You call it whatever you want. It's a it's a guy's show. Mm -hmm. And you've got like Jaron Jensen who are like huge and bulky. And yeah, they can throw people around and stuff. And you got like like Misha who's tall as well. Mm -hmm. Jack. You know, they can 
they can use their bulk to their advantage. And she's this teeny, 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 tiny. Yeah. Ruth is tiny. Yeah. And she just kicks ass so hard. And I love it. She's uncompromising. She's an asshole to the end. And she looks fucking good as the Queen of Hell. <laughs> she really, really does. I love it. Love it. I love her. She's fabulous. I think, fabulous. too, a lot of it is um when you realize how long she's been around in the history of her her self-preservation, right? Like, and her choices that were, I think at the time, seen as so very selfish, right? Like the things she gave up for mm -hmm. her own betterment or advancement because you know as a witch she was you know constantly being like tossed here and tossed there and it, I think she went from like the Grand Coven I think realizing too you know she was exiled from that because of her mm -hmm. power her use of the power and she was chained magically right like she didn't even when yeah. we meet her we then realize she's not even at full power um full power. Yeah. and how she again i looking back now really do i like listening to her conversations with crowley and really picking it apart and how much she just did not want to let her wall down because she still needed to protect herself and a lot of that wall was i can't care about anybody else because that becomes my weakness and yeah. I think when Crowley dies, right, end of season 12, we don't really see that regret from her until after. Because I don't even think she knew. I'm trying to think it was that one episode that I said I really liked. It was one of my favorites. Um, what she talks about with Sam and she also then finds out about Crowley and you can see then there's that, well, I want to, she tries to like, she starts killing all the Reapers because she's trying to get Death's attention because she wants mm -hmm. to make that trade, right? Like, I think she, I think she decides she wants to try to bring Crowley back, but it's already yeah. too late. And, you know, at that point, Death is Billy and Billy has like, no, we're not, we're not messing with natural order. I'm not the, I'm not the guy from before. We're not making yeah. any deals. What's happens happen. What needs to happen hap is going to happen. And seeing her, I think that regret that she has, and I'm also curious. I mean, again, like I'm just so irritated that they never give Crowley any mention after he passes, like what might've happened to him, but like, he's got to yeah. be in he's got to be in hell right like no i think they go died? to don't, the, don't they go to purgatory where did they go where did demons go do they go don't to they the go empty to with the angels i don't yeah i guess they do right because ruby i think we found out she was in the empty so which but so does that span <laughs> does that span universes is it the same empty is it the same it can't it can't be because then, yeah. otherwise you'd have multiple copies of the same people in heaven. So he must be in the AU empty. I feel like that. I feel like she would have maybe like done something. I just think she would have. There was there was too much regret. I think as Queen of Hell, she would have found a way to like, you know, even if it was just have him back in, in hell, you know. Um, I just want to I want to point out something interesting that I've just I've only just discovered just as I was looking because I wanted to get a good reminder of her Queen of Hell outfit because it was fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. And that is the she's wearing trousers. She's wearing pants. And that's mm -hmm. the only time in the whole show you see that because she dresses. She dresses incredibly well, but she dresses incredibly feminine, doesn't she? She has those sort of more traditional long flowing gowns. I think I've seen a few occasions, just a couple, where she wears pants, but they're they're always very flowy. They're not oh. like they're not um curvy, right? Like they don't like she wears dresses, I think sometimes that are more like hug curving. But I think I've seen her just it's just a few times I've seen her with and it's usually when she's trying to get the guy, right? Like she's when she's on that kick where she's like, I gotta get the guy with the money to take care oh, of yeah, me. Yeah. I think I've seen her with with um, pants just on a couple, just a few occasions. So, but normally, yes, she's very 
decked out, decked to the nines and, and everything like that. But yeah, that one was, um, was it's that like really a full, nice. like a jumpsuit? Like, yeah, it is. Thingy? Okay. It is. And it's like, it's sleeveless. Mm-hmm. So, and I just think it's, it's obviously meant to mark the shift. Yeah. And I think it looks so good. And her hair looks so good. And she's wearing a snake as a belt. Like, it's a fake, it's a fake <laughs> snake, obviously. But I'm just like, maybe it's real. You don't know. Maybe it comes to life. And then when it's tired, it just goes and curls around her waist. That would be insanely cool. Yeah, I think they had a lot of fun with with her. Because, I mean, there's not a lot of opportunity to do much with with females on the show rather than just what they did in the beginning, which was like, you know, tight jeans, halter tops and stuff like that. So to take her character mm-hmm. and really, like, have her revel in her femininity, I think, you know, and... Um, yes just put it forward in this very like i'm the shit way and here's here's what you have to deal with it was very like ostentatious very this is me like you know deal with it kind of thing and she always (laughs) i think she always wanted to make a statement um Hmm. in in what she what she wore um and she was also very like color coordinated right like it almost seemed like yeah. I felt like whatever she was wearing, like color wise, it was usually like it was definitely like her her makeup was always like just very dramatic and the the eyeshadows and I think I've heard Ruth say that she was all about like the the makeup. Like she loved like they used urban decay or something. Like yeah. that. And she was all like about that. She loved the um the theat- theatricality, I think, of Rowena, because I think yes. you gotta play that up. Um Oh character. yeah, you've got to. Yeah, you one hundred percent. If you're gonna have that, mm-hmm. you really have to lean into it. And that's, I mean, that's a great lead into Ruth, who is genuinely such an amazing. She's so fucking amazing. I mm-hmm. love Ruth. And so, so much sweet. time for Ruth. Yeah, she's so sweet, and she actually really does talk like that, Ted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he is. He is quite enamored with Ruth. Um, I think he he really enjoyed seeing her. You know, at the conventions and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and he just loves how she, she kind of plays up her, she plays up her Rowena bits, you know, when she's on stage with the, with the crowd and with the audience. And um, I think very much follows what uh, maybe Mark Shepard, you know, did a lot at the conventions and kind of like learned from that and yeah, kind of like presence um on stage it, it says a lot about somebody who's so very tiny and demure that can that can do that right I mean I think I've mm. heard I've heard Jensen say that you know she's one of like the class acts like on set she she knocks it out of the park every time and you know she's she's gonna like do her best to stay in character mm. even if stuff's going on like crazy around them um if jared's deliberately fucking yeah. stuff up i yeah, love yeah again i love i love that blooper i love that blooper because she's so mad you can <laughs> see how mad she is and they're like ruth is gonna stab you because she's just like you can see her fighting so hard to stay as rowena mm-hmm. and not laugh and yeah. not give him what he wants i really really love it Okay, so this is normally the part of any given podcast where we would go, hey, our sponsor today is, but we ain't sponsored. So we just have some uh, causes, some charities that we'd like to um, bring to your attention, point you in the direction of if you feel able or willing to donate to them. We have three main sort of causes, inverted commas, that we're uh, uh, promoting feels like the wrong word, but like signposting, highlighting, Mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. So the first one is um, to do with the conflict in Ukraine, the Russian invasion unlawfully of Ukraine. So we would just like to draw your attention to World Central Kitchen, which, as it sounds like, is, um, you know, helping to feed people that are affected by this conflict. Um, You know, although it's dropped out of the media quite a bit now, there's still a hell of a lot of people in Ukraine that are trapped, that are cut off you know, that are struggling for food and water and basic supplies. So that's what that charity is there for. We have Kids Save, which again, as the name suggests, is looking out for the children that are affected um, by this 
I mean, conflict feels like the wrong word. It's, you know, it's un- an unlawful invasion. But yeah, yeah. yeah, kids save. And then we have, if you don't want to sort of, if you don't feel you can or want to commit to just one single charity, we also have a link to the global giving page for the Ukraine Crisis Relief Fund, which obviously is then split between various different places that it needs to go. It's sort of the global equivalent of a GoFundMe or a Just Giving page. So we have that. And then for those of you that are in the US and, oh, Lord, we know it's hard right now. We do. So we have the um, Mums Demand Action, Ending Gun Violence, um, the Sandy Hook Promise, Advocate for Gun Regulation in Your State, wherever you may be. We have the American Civil Liberties Union, which is, you know, basic human rights. Come on, people. Like, I, it, it doesn't feel like it should be this hard, but somebody needs to give your government a kick up the ass and be like, mm-hmm. hey, it's not this hard. You're making it harder than it is. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, vote.gov. You know, look up the voting regulations in your state, in your area, find out what you need to do, be informed, be prepared, because that is the best way to enact any kind of change. And that doesn't just go for the US, that goes for the UK, anywhere else. Educate yourself. Know what you need to do so nobody can catch you out. Last cause definitely not least lgbt lgbtq plus people my folks we are under attack there's no easy way to say it there's no nice way to say it people want us dead yo it's really heavy in the us it's coming in the uk you know and it's fucking hard there's no one cause fits all for this there's nothing particularly global and to be honest I didn't really want to signpost to any, you know, causes that are fighting against this. I want to bring this down more to people. You know, we're not just, we're not a statistic. Everyone's a person. So the causes I want to signpost are Switchboard LGBT in the UK and the Trevor Project in the USA. And they are both um, services where you can reach out, you can be connected to people to talk to, you know, it's hard. We need to come together, guys. So if you need to talk to somebody, if you need help, if you are not safe where you are, these charities will help you. You know, reach out to them, even if it's just someone to talk to, even if it's just someone to go, this fucking sucks. If you need that help, reach out as well. For anyone outside of the US and the UK, I'd like to draw your attention to the Trevor Project. Again, they have resources for international LGBTQ+ people youth we know that as much as it's hard in our countries it's a hell of a lot harder in some other countries and it's not easy to come out it's not easy to be safe so take a look at that link for some resources some places to go for help some ideas of how to keep yourself safe so again it's not a sponsor we wish we had a nice fun sponsor to bring you but we know that it's hard and we just want to point you in the direction of help for others if you can give it and help for yourself if you need it so Back to the podcast, I guess. I just, I love it so much. She's just, she really is a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. I just have, I have a lot of love in my heart for Ruth and for Rowena. And again, absolutely fight me. Rowena and Sam all the way down the line. Yeah. She had that little tryst with Gabriel, which was fuck funny. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. And supposedly there was something that had, was bubbling up or had happened with catch or might have been rekindled like at the very beginning of season 15 oh, right before yeah. right before she got it i think like because i think yeah catch got it first and then she ended up getting it in the next episode um yeah so yeah. there's there's that i was reading so we were on because we're both on the wiki and i'm just i'm reading the um the quote that's like front and center which is basically like part of her amazing speech like in her final her Mm. final episode and just how very focused and like you say can her conviction really just always comes down to the magic um yeah because she's like i don't care about anything enough to take my own life not you your brother not even the world but i believe in prophecy i believe in magic and i'm here and you're here and everything we need to end this right is in our hands I know this in my bones. And I remember when she says that, when she says bones, it's like, 
you kind of, I remember feeling, feeling like this chill, you know, it has yes. to be this way. Do it. Kill me, Samuel. And I loved that, but yeah. she never called him Sam. He was always Samuel. Yeah. 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 And then she's like, I know we've gotten quite fond of each other, haven't we? They were fucking. (laughs) But will you let the world die? Let your brother die just so I can live. It's it's that's a good that's a good like it's very personalized to Sam Mm -hmm. that because we know that Sam Dean will will kill. But Sam Sam doesn't seem as comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's let the monsters live before. Mm-hmm. where Dean wouldn't you know it's always Sam convincing Dean to let them be so I think that's really it's quite personal to Sam to be like you know I'm just I'm just one person and everybody will die yeah if you don't do this and it was oh he was in tears and mm-hmm. I was in tears and my husband was like what is wrong with you and I'm like you don't understand I'm yeah that that sad. scene that scene really did I I wasn't I wasn't prepared for for those those emotions with her character. When they came up, I was like, okay, she's definitely been with us a while and she's definitely, you know, she's she's cemented a place in this world and her again, you know, she's believing in magic, but she's making a sacrifice too for the magic. And her I find it interesting when, you know, she asks, you know, will you let the world die? Let your brother die just so I can live. And I don't know if that's an indication of maybe like Sam having grown a bit too, where, you know, he's played the, oh, yeah, no, you're not, you're not that important, Dean. You know, it's, it's, it's always the world first. And I think they always have to struggle with that too. And she's using that. She's still finding a way to get what she wants by plucking you know at that certain string that she knows is is sam's weakness so she's still using all of that for you know i don't know if it's necessarily in her mind a greater good but it's just this is what has to be kind of thing Mm. and yeah i think uh, i do think though she had to know she had to know what would happen she had to know where she was going she had plans when she got there like she is not Mm. a woman without a plan yeah ever yeah. So she had to be like, okay, well, I won't have Amazon anymore, which is going to suck. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll be the queen of hell. Yeah. So, you know, it's maybe maybe a little bit manipulative on her part. She wants always that bit more power. Mm-hmm. However strong she is, she always wants to be that bit more. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you can get any higher than the queen of hell. Yeah. So there was definitely... She's she's the woman with a plan, but it was it was very, very sad. And she yeah. was the longest lived character, longest lived female character in the show. Like yeah, 100%. would that be well Jody? Oh uh, yeah, Jody. But we just we don't we don't never saw her as much, you know? Like we just she yeah. didn't come, she didn't have she as was, many times. Yeah, I would say Rowena was the the longest recurring, recurring maybe. Yeah. star i would say by the end jody was um you know more of a guest star yeah 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 so i um yeah i just i i really do i i'm i'm looking forward to like now we're getting into as we my husband and i do our rewatch we're ending getting ready to end season 12 and we're starting season 13 and i know it, those aren't the best seasons but i know there's there's some character stuff you know that really comes up in a couple episodes with Rowena I think in season 13 especially that kind of lay the groundwork for you know what's coming Mm. down the pike again like we always get into that on Supernatural they've they've thrown those well this is the way it's going to happen or this is what's supposed to happen we don't we're not going to tell you how but you know there's going to be the whole like you know you're gonna die at Sam's hands and it's like Sam's like there's no way that's gonna happen it's like mm, it's gonna it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and then when you see it you're like oh no why is it gonna happen <laughs> like this yeah um did you think when I, I remember when they were first like when they were first embracing I almost thought maybe she, that she was going to like do something to Sam 
almost, even though they were talking about what it was, I just got this impression of their, their bodies coming together. I was like, I didn't know if there was going to be something else that was going to happen, but Mm -hmm. I just remember like being that split second of, oh no, is this going to go a different way? But the stakes wouldn't be as high if Sam had died. Cause you know, he just would have come right back, but um, yeah, but there was always that little bit of, is she going to be able to, to take this? Mm-hmm. Is she going to be able to grit her teeth and let this happen? Mm-hmm. Or is she going to, you know, retaliate instinctively? I agree. It was it was very fraught mm-hmm. with the thing. I definitely think he could have killed her in a nicer way. But I think she had to, didn't she have to walk? Yeah, it had to be like a slow thing, I think. Like she had to get to where she needed to go. So it was like, it, it couldn't be like a an immediate like death, right? Like she had to like, get from point A to point B. I think she had to do it herself. A lot of people have made the comment, you know, she's walking, no one's helping her. She's doing it all on her own. She's going to this place. Like she's not even like leaning on Sam or anything. And that's such a Mm -hmm. strong indication of her character. Like if she's going to do this, she's going to do this her way. You know, she's not going to rely on any, the only thing she needed Sam for it was just, you know, stick the blade in and twist, you know, everything else she was going to do. I'm just looking I'm just looking at the trivia now. She's um, the second most reoccurring female character. Ruby is the third. And apparently Mary Winchester is the most recurring female character. That would make sense, I guess, because 12, 13, 14. I mean, she was she was pretty heavy in those three, three seasons. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, she's been on the show longer than every character other than, of course, Sam and Dean, Castiel. And Bobby, Crowley, right? yeah. Crowley, Lucifer, and Mary. And I don't think you can say that about Lucifer because he's had quite a few vessels. So I don't because he like he had cast as a vessel for quite a quite a long time. Yeah. And so then it's... he did that um Vince Vincenti <laughs> for a Rick Springfield played him yeah. for a little while. Um yeah. Cause when did Lucifer came for season five? And then no season, yeah, season five. He he's he's risen in at the end mm-hmm. of season four, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's yeah. made the most impression out of all. You know, at, I mean, at least after to me after Cass and Crowley. I mean, I consider her like next in line, really, in terms of characters that. Well, no, there's Bobby. I have to stick Bobby in there too. Um so maybe it would be Cass, Crowley, Bobby, Rowena. I think in terms of really a lasting impression, mm-hmm. the amount of time they were on. Um, I mean, like you've always got the ghost of like Mary coming back, right? And Lucifer mm-hmm. too, like he's always like back and forth and they wait a couple seasons and then they bring him back in or like, you know, they they do another big bad, but then, well let's bring in all reliable, take care of it that way. So I think a lot of it too is I like how they discuss, or you really start to see what um, the PTSD that she's gone through. We've talked about Mm -hmm. this before too with Lucifer and how she bonds with Sam that way. So I think they're very broken in a very similar way together at the hands of, you know, a similar the same bad guy basically like i don't think you can say that with sam and dean you know it's like they've they've had different trauma i think mm. the trauma that sam and rowena had is very similar um yeah very specific mm-hmm. very yeah. specific and i was i always liked that because i always i thought that was like it stayed very true dean was always naturally distrustful Mm-hmm. Of witches. I mean, he seems to be naturally distrustful of all women, mm-hmm. it felt like, but certainly of witches. Mm-hmm. And he never really shook that from Rowena. She was convenient mm-hmm. and he would call on her if necessary, but she mm-hmm. was never his first choice. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think Sam, I think that helped Sam bond with her, you know, a little bit of that little brother, well, I'm gonna mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it definitely shared drama 100%. And the, the scene, the scene where they talk about it is very, very gut wrenching as well. Yeah, yeah. But she was definitely Team Sam all the way. Like one hundred percent. Yeah, there was no um, 
there was no love lost <laughs> between her and Dean. Um, but they had like some witty banter, you know, which I did like. Like they would, oh yeah, they would kind of give. Yeah, she, she gave Dean the hardest time, like about certain things, and it was just so comical and great. Like that, you know, she could kind of like shut his mouth, you know, like with a couple, just yeah, or have him think in a way that was just like, you know, I I think it's that same episode where she's like, oh, you didn't get to fifth base, and he's like, there's no such thing as fifth base. <laughs> and she's like oh you poor sheltered boy or something like that yeah and he's just like what <laughs> this what what are you talking about what no <laughs> yeah 100 yeah. 100 yeah she's just and then i mean i put it on my bottom episodes because i found it really really distressing but the episode where dean is losing his memory and she comes in and she's like can we not just keep him like this yeah <laughs> See, that's like, one of the reasons I love that. I, I love I love that episode because I love her. Again, the only time she's going to give away any information is when she thinks no one's going to remember, right? And she's she lets that wall down and she talks to him. Yeah. In a way that you get insight into her, but, you know, it's on her terms and she's not giving that because that's a, that will make her weak, you know? And yeah, I, I, yeah, can we? You know, do we have to fix him? I just, I love, I love that. I love yeah. that line. Like, we, we could just leave him like this. <laughs> I just, I know, I don't, I don't like that episode because I don't like the scene in the mirror where mm-hmm. you can see him visibly struggling and losing his memory. I don't like that. Yeah. But I do, I do like the fact that she was like, okay, yeah, no, we'll, we'll fix this. It's fine. It's okay. I can, <laughs> I, I can fix this. And then, of course, there are all the, the funny moments in the last couple of seasons with the, Gabriel's grace when they're trying to open the open mm-hmm. the rift and the mm-hmm. the the scene behind the bookshelf. Yeah, yeah. She might be wearing a pantsuit there. I'm trying to remember now. I'm thinking she might be wearing pants in that scene with Gabriel. Yeah, yeah I'm maybe. gonna have to check it because I'm like, maybe. how many times did she wear pants? <sighs> maybe so. I just thought it was interesting that for all she's very very feminine in life, and, and there's not that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not to say that the outfit that she wears as the Queen of Hell is not feminine at all, but I just think it's like clearly somebody somewhere was trying to make a distinction yeah. and a point with that. And I feel like it should yeah, be yeah, noticed. Yeah. Yes. I absolutely. don't know if it was, you know, I don't know what they were trying to put across and I don't know if it came across the way they wanted it to, but a point was definitely being made mm-hmm. and I feel we should draw attention to that. Yes. And her hair was fabulous. Yeah, because so it was she up, had right? Good hair, though. Was it up? In it was scene? up, but then it was like coming over her shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was like, oh, it was great. She always had great hair, though. She always mm-hmm. had fabulous makeup, fabulous yeah. hair. Yeah, and it's really good. Like if you watch like any of the other cast talk about her, there's them. Um, there's oh, I can't. I think it might be in like TV Guide or something like that. And it's Jared and Jensen and Misha and Alex, and they're like, who would be most likely to, you know. Who would be most likely to um, find their way without a map? Who would be most likely to date a demon? Mm-hmm. Obviously, Jared. <laughs> accidentally, it's accidentally date a demon, and Jared Jensen just like sort of like looks away and like points to Jar- uh, points to Jared with his thumb, and Jared just turns around and goes, "There was nothing accidental about it. It was very deliberate." But they definitely said uh, one of the questions was like, "Who has the most elaborate skincare routine?" And Jensen mm-hmm. was like, "I'm gonna go with Ruth. She's always got like stuff on her face." And like cream on her face, and she got like stuff under her eyes. Mm-hmm. But like you can see the genuine warmth that she is truly, truly beloved yeah. by the cast, which is great. And in much the same vein as nobody else could have played Castiel other than Misha, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody else could have played Rowena. Yeah, it's, this show is like lightning in a bottle, where mm-hmm. there's so many characters that you go, nobody else could have done that. Nobody, yeah. nobody else could have, you know, could have. To come anywhere close yeah to embodying that character whereas sometimes you watch a show and you'd be like so and so would have done a better job with this mm-hmm. for example i may have mentioned this in a rambling episode but the um andy weir book the martian the audiobook is read by will wheaton and the movie is the um main character is played by stop talking matt damon now i watched the movie before I read the audiobook. I mm-hmm. watched the movie, then I read the book, and then I got really heavily into like audiobooks and audible. And I bought that because I loved the book. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew it was Will Wheaton. And I'd watched him on like um not Breaking Bad. Um, 
Big Bang Theory. And I was like, oh, it will mean. This is fine. Mm-hmm. So I love the movie. And then unfortunately, Matt Damon turned into Stop Talking Matt Damon. And now mm-hmm. I can never watch The Martian again, which is a shame. Yeah. But I they that. should have cast Will Wheaton in that movie because he is fucking brilliant. Mm. His portrayal of Mark Watney is amazing. And now I'm just like, you really, you dropped a bollock there, guys. Mm. But for Supernatural, there's nobody that I look at and think, so-and-so would have been better yeah. for that role than whoever was cast. They did an amazing, amazing casting job. Yeah. And Ruthie's fabulous and we love her. Yeah. I think it says a lot that, you know, we're still talking about the show, you know, and it's, you know, it just has this ability to really make a profound effect on people just based off of characters and their growth and their change. And again, mm-hmm. like, I think we're just very lucky to have so many years with characters. I mean, we had Rowena, I think, for like six seasons. Like, yeah, that's just sometimes as lucky as some shows get to even be on, or sometimes they should be way past. And granted, people could say that, you know, about Supernatural here and there, but still there's that exploration of character that you just don't get in a show that's maybe only three seasons or four seasons. And they've, you know, yeah. they've introduced characters late. Um, I remember, like, as we're doing a rewatch, my husband's like, so when does Rowena show up? And I just would like put both my hands up and he's like, and what season are we on? <laughs> like, We're on seven, honey. You got three yeah. or four seasons before she shows up. He's like, man, he's like, I just, he's like, I forget like all of the stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Like there's a lot of storylines and plot and characters that, you know, come in and out. And I mean, really think about it. I mean, like Bobby never met Rowena. Like that was never a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, that's isn't crazy that, to have so many different characters yeah. that had their own space on a show. And yeah, that, that those, those dynamics that maybe like, you know, what would have those been like? And yeah, it's um just incarnations of the show just within its run is pretty miraculous. And the, the characters they brought us, I think it's, yeah. It's great. And we get to talk about them now and kind of like do a little deep dive on on more characters. So that's kind of like our goal, too, is every once in a while we're going to toss another one at our listeners and just just chat about whether what we liked, what we don't like. Um, we'll try to put some other uh, themes together for certain characters that maybe, you know, we we need a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, to fill up an episode. But. Yeah, Don't so worry, I, people. We have a list. Yeah, we have a list. We have a list. It has lots of bullet points. It has notes on it. It has funny episode titles on it. Yeah. You I don't know. know what we're going to call this one, though. I've got to think about it. I've think about this episode. I really think we should call it The Woman Who Lived. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just purely because I had to have a conversation with somebody today about um, the, the wizard writer mm-hmm. who I detest. Mm-hmm. But I like I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it and I was like, nah, fuck you. I'm going to steal part of your IP <laughs> and use it for my own gains because fuck you, turf. No, I um, think, I think this, I this like may that. or may, you'll know because you'll have seen the title. We haven't seen the title. May or may not be titled. No, the woman I, who lived. I like that. That's, that's, that's going to be it. That's going to be it. Yeah. The woman who lived. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was the genius behind Castiel the Angel of First Days as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. indeed. We've got Battle of the Dads coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I have those the only ones I have good names for. But uh, when we were writing the list, I was like, we should definitely do John versus Bobby. And we mm-hmm. were both in the Google Doc writing at the same time. And I was like, Battle of the Dads, John versus Bobby. And yep. we all know Bobby would kick John's ass <laughs> every which way. But we'll get to that in another episode. <laughs> we'll get to that in another episode. So I guess we'll we'll wrap this one up um for today. Yeah. And just Give you some ways to reach out. Let us know your thoughts about Rowena. How fan? Pretty much just how fantastic she is is all is all we really need to hear. But you could just concur with with all of those all yeah. those thoughts. Um, so if you want, I mean, if you go if you really hate her, come and tell us. But you better have a good reason. Yeah, I expect like a minimum of two pages. <laughs> okay, and I want an introduction and a conclusion. And if you could include some kind of scientific tables. That would be extra credit. You come prepared if you're going to come and be like, Rowena is awful. 
I want to have his She's wife. Fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go. Sorry. Sounds you, good. No, yes. no, no. That's Sandra fine. was telling you how to get in touch with us to provide said essay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can email the essay at idling in the impala at gmail.com. Um, you can find us on Twitter. It's idling in the letter D Impala. Uh, we just have decided we're going to have a discord. We don't know how it's going to go. There'll be a description about how to get to that. If you want to even just leave your thoughts randomly in there for us to come back to later and see about Rowena. Yeah. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me on AO3 under username Drasna. That's D-R-A-S-N-A on Twitter. I am S Kyle writes. That's S K Y L E W R I T E S. And if you want to read or learn about more of my original fiction, you can visit my website at sandrakyle.com. Look at this. Such a mess, isn't it, guys? There are <laughs> zero ducks anywhere near each other, but it's okay. I'm the agent of chaos in most things, but I am the paragon of order in this one. So Thank God. If- <laughs> She's still salty about the, the uh, Google Drive folders. <laughs> She's still mad. And she's trying she's trying to be British about it and be like, no, it's fine. But her little American heart is like, no, I'm pissed. No, you fucked up my folders. But if you want to reach out to me, I am Carly Karma. So that is K-A-R-L-E-E and then Karma as you would spell it normally. You can find me on AO3 on Twitter and my Discord name is also Carly Karma. It's the same profile picture in all the places in case you think, hey, I wonder if there's more than one person out there with a weird spelled name. Same profile picture. It's probably me, guys. So, you know, reach out, send us your essays, or reach out <laughs> and confirm that we are correct. And Rowena is the most amazing person ever. I would argue she's the second most amazing female character on Supernatural. The title obviously goes to Charlie, but mm. we will discuss that in a different episode. <laughs> so, reach out, let us know what you think. Send us cat pictures. Maybe we'll share some cat pictures with you as well. So thank you very much for joining us in the back seat. We will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.